let's talk about proofreading this book and how it went i have my timeline written out here and spoiler i don't think it's ever 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 taken me this long to proofread a book it's kind of shocking <laughs> um i have reasons i promise okay excuses but same difference right <laughs> anyway let's go back to the beginning Day one, September 16th, I ordered my first proof copy, AKA a physical copy of the book. And it came in the mail like four days later. So it was just four days from start to finish. I will link this unboxing below as well as a video about how I do print copies because I know I'm gonna get questions. So go watch those videos if you wanna know the logistics behind this. When I ordered this, I wanted to see, number one, how much bigger had it gotten than the original book. I also wanted to see the cover in person and just hold it in my hands. And then I also truly did intend to proofread this first copy. I really did. <laughs> now, on that same day that I ordered a proof copy, I sent it to my critique partner. I believe it was the exact same day, the 16th. But day two, the 17th, she sent it back to me completely done already. I was blown away. Thank you, Jesse. Huge shout out to Jesse Elliott. She's amazing. I could not believe she'd read it and given me feedback in a day. Like, that was so amazing. And I instantly was like, well, now the proof copies out of date because I'm gonna make these edits. <laughs> if I'm being real with you guys, I think I must have just wanted to honestly hold the book in my hand because if I would thought it through, I would not have ordered a proof copy before I'd gone through Jesse's notes anyway. I think that was just me being overly excited and I wanted to hold the book in my hands and then I was like, oh wait, there's more work to do. So I basically decided after a little bit of waffling around, you know what, I'm gonna shelve this book, I'm going to implement Jesse's notes and then I'm going to order a proof copy from Barnes and Noble, which will have the, you know, completely finalized cover without that strip across the front that says not for resale, and I will proofread this. <laughs> I can't remember what day I submitted the changes to Barnes & Noble. I think it was like a week before I actually ordered it, but then day 19, October 4th, I ordered a Barnes & Noble copy. Without realizing it, I let almost an entire month go by from when I planned to start proofreading to when I actually got this second copy from Barnes & Noble on day 27, October 12th. The Barnes Barnes & Noble copy arrived. <laughs> but at this point, I really was struggling. If I'm being honest, I was scared to read it. I had been going on a massive reading binge. I'd been reading so many incredible books, like really good books. And I was just like, what if my book doesn't measure up? I was absolutely terrified so i was pretty much avoiding this at all costs i did the unboxing and then i was like i have so many other things to do i don't have time for that right now over the next gosh i think it was like 10 days i somehow managed to put it off every single day because i always found something else that was more important to do i had youtube videos to edit i had i needed to market i needed to do newsletter i don't know you name it i found something else that i could be doing instead because let's be real when you put so much intense pressure on something as big and daunting as this it just gets bigger and more daunting and more terrifying with each day that goes by so i was absolutely putting it off i figured eh, i got two months till release right but then it hit me uh around the end of october on day 37 october 22nd or technically i think the day before i was like i can't put this off anymore because a lot of things are starting to hinge on this i wanted to send out early reader copies to my patrons by the end of october i wanted to start working with my art team and let them know i had the book ready to go by the end of october <laughs> what else i think just mostly i wanted to start getting it out to readers oh but also until i finished this book i couldn't get myself to move on and start book two again and i really needed to get into editing book two because my goal was to at least have some edits done on book two before book one comes out so that it doesn't feel pressurized if i am picking a release date and putting the pre-order to book two in the back of book one which is something i try really hard to do and i was like i need to be a lot further than i am <laughs> i think we all know that feeling right again october 22nd finally started proofreading i made this bullet journal tracker thank you to Brittany wang for reminding me that i always do better with a tracker because it helps me to see my progress it gives me kind of an estimate of where i should be it lets me know if i'm falling behind which of course i instantly began falling behind <laughs> my self-control was absolutely shot at this point so i had only proofread i want to say like 35 ish pages when I got a book in the mail that I immediately started reading instead of this book. <laughs> and that of course in turn only made my imposter syndrome worse because I was comparing my book to this amazing 
product that had thousands of reviews and I was like, am I ever gonna be there? Just getting all up in my head. Are readers even gonna review this at all? I mean, it is a second edition. Maybe they won't take the time. Maybe they won't care. Maybe they don't even wanna read it because they figure they've already read it before and they don't know that there's over 80 new pages and basically a brand new ending, like four chapters worth. And I was just so in my head, you guys. I was really struggling. <laughs> Day 38 and 39, which was Sunday and Monday, I basically just spent reading that book and procrastinating and then I just cracked down. I'm like, you know what? A deadline is a deadline. It might not be amazing, but at least it'll be done if I actually sit down and work on it. So I created that tracker that I told you guys about and I was like, ooh, I don't know if this is possible, but I told my patrons the 28th. So it was like Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Let's break this book up into three sections and see if I can do it and like 10 pages at a time because I was like, that doesn't seem like too much. It still was a lot because I was being way, 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 way too detailed, you guys. Like, let me show you. I'm gonna show you upside down. I'm just gonna show you how detailed I was being. This is not what proofreading is supposed to look like. Just FYI, proofreading is supposed to be like minor stuff like typos, grammatical things like commas, little stuff like um, missing a quotation mark or a comma or a period or misspelling a word, little stuff like that. That's what proofreading is supposed to be, okay? I did find, I think, four actual proofreading errors. Like for example, I had a comma at the end of a sentence instead of a period. And I was like, hmm, I probably meant to keep going and I just didn't. <laughs> but for the most part like what you see here this is me questioning every single sentence and reorganizing it to see if I can make it a little more clearer or a little more interesting or whatever and I even wrote a full new like this would ended up being about a page worth of stuff that I added to the story because I was like I don't know if her stakes are coming across intense enough at the beginning. I know what they are for me but does the reader know I'm gonna make sure that it's really clear right from the get-go <laughs> So just in case you're wondering, again, that's not what proofreading is supposed to look like, but that's how I do it, because <laughs> I can't help myself. That was day 40, October 25th, as well as 41, 42, 43, and I just continued to fall more and more behind because I was going agonizingly slow and I knew it would be worth it, but it felt so incredibly stressful to be falling so far behind. <laughs> I hated it. Just for clarification, let me know if any other writers feel that way. Let me know in the comments because I still don't feel like the book is done. Like I could go back through it. I was doing a fun little like game where we pick a page and I share a line of the story. And every single time I was like, okay, I'm on this page. Here's a line I could share, but like I want to rewrite it. Maybe I could do better. And so it's such a struggle for me to consider a book done. Like it never feels done. Anybody else relate to that? Let me know. Day 44 and 45, which was October 29th and 30th, I continued to work on this book and I'm proofreading it. Even though it was the weekend and I try really hard not to work on the weekends, usually I was like, I gotta get this done. I was feeling the crunch time. It was just weighing on me so heavy. So every time Zion had a nap, I was proofreading and he naps twice a day at the moment, usually between one to two hours, depending on the day. So I got like roughly three hours or four hours to proofread each of those days. I was determined to finish, so I actually stayed up late on Sunday night. I was like, I'm so close. I was literally like 15 pages away from the end, something like that. And I was like, I'm gonna stay up and finish. So I did. And thankfully I had been inputting the changes into my manuscript as I went. So it wasn't this another huge daunting task. It was like, okay, just a few more pages and put those good to go. But I wasn't done yet. Day 46. October 31st, Halloween technically. I had fallen up behind in my other work as well. So on top of this proofread, I was also like recording a video, trying to remember to do like social media posts and just lots of little things, answering emails, etc. But as I'd been proofreading, I made this list in the back of the book. These are a bunch of words that to some extent, I was like, I'm seeing this word a lot. I need to go back through and actually remove a good chunk of them after I finished proofreading. So for example, the word finally is probably the worst culprit followed by let's see um maybe is probably my other really big culprit i don't know why i don't know why so basically as i was reading if i started to notice it's what they call an echo and it just feels like it's repeated way too much so i did start to edit them out as i was proofreading if i ever saw something and it was already on my list of words here i'd be like yeah 
let's get rid of that. But then after I finished the full proofread and inputting all those changes, I went back and word searched these words to also try and delete even more instances of them and see if I could put in a different synonym or delete them all together. And that, believe it or not, took like another hour, hour and a half just to do this. Once I finished that, I next went through all the comments that I had put in the document of things that I was like, I'm not sure I want to do this, or maybe it was like a formatting note or whatever. I was like, should I change how the chapter headers look? I, I don't know if I like that anymore. I think I'm going to change it. And I was like, okay, now I have to address these. Sometimes it's very annoying if your past self left your future self a problem and now you have to deal with it, but that's what had happened. Then my third step was to take all the changes I'd made to the paperback manuscript, copy them over into the ebook manuscript because I'd already made Made two separate files with you know just minor changes like for example ebooks don't have any blank pages so I had two separate files I just copied over the story element over into that then once I had both the paperback and the ebook ready to go they actually had to be converted into a totally different type of file than a word document because for paperbacks you need a PDF and that takes some formatting so I had to do that and then for ebooks right now most print-on-demand companies take what's called an EPUB file so I actually go over to draft to digital I upload my book I check everything over, add some of their pretty formatting stuff that they offer, and then I download an EPUB file of my book. And then that file is what I actually use to send out copies to my patrons, their early reader copies, and to my ARC readers, which again stands for advanced review copies if you don't know. I'll link some info about that below if you want to watch other videos about ARCs. But all in all, it took me 46 days from start to finish to proofread this book. And no, that's not normal. It's really not normal. <laughs> the craziest part, besides the time frame, I guess you could say, is that after I finished reading, I was so incredibly excited about this story and that imposter syndrome that I was dealing with was gone. I was like, I think people are gonna love it. I am obsessed with the ending. I think it's so much better and so much more interesting and oh my gosh, and I just like cannot wait. I'm going to literally be watching, like refreshing the reviews every single day on Goodreads for the next month until release. Can you guys believe there's only a month as of the date that I'm recording this until this book comes out. One month exactly. It's about to get real. So in case you're curious about what's coming up next for me, it's going to be a fun mix of like marketing this book, getting those art copies out, trying to remember and find unique, exciting ways to post, share about it. I'm going to be sharing chapters in my newsletter exclusively, and I'm also going to need to create those annotated chapters for my pre-order incentive. So if you guys don't know, I'm giving away a ton of things for people who pre-order, and I'll link a form below if you do pre-order and you want some of those free gifts because pre-orders help authors so incredibly much. And... I just want to say thank you and I, I appreciate you. But then as I'm doing all of that and all that marketing stuff, I also need to get back in the creative mindset and start editing book two and sending it to my beta readers. So that's going to be my November project and I'm really excited and hopeful um, and I will be sharing how that goes eventually. So I hope you subscribe if you're not already and I'll talk to you guys again very soon. Bye!